Hello, um, my name is Mark, and this is, this is my, this is my quines. I really like quines. They're really fun. Um, so yeah, quick, who am I? This is actually real. I've done it multiple times and it works every time. Um, so yeah, just, just fun fact. If you go to Starbucks, you ask for water with whipped cream. It's always free. They're not allowed to charge you. Um, freshman, if you see me in the Ritzek room, half the time I'm sleeping. I play a lot of Smash Bros. I am cyber student i eat a lot you know yeah um and i play a lot of volleyball i really like volleyball best sport um yeah so just a quick thing what exactly is a quine that is kind of what we're talking about so a quine is any code that produces its own source code as its output so the structure of a quine is really interesting because basically what it means is that you have your code. Now, let's say you have code and you want to print hello world. Now, if you run print hello world, your output is hello world. But that's not quine. You're just printing something. Your output needs to be the exact same code that is in the input. So if you want to quine, print hello world, your output needs to be print hello world. Which makes it really interesting. Um, there are some unofficial rules. You can't use your user input because that's considered cheating. It needs to be a Turing complete language, which I'll talk about more. It can't access its own file, because if it just reads its own memory address, then yes, it is technically a quine. However, that doesn't break any of the rules of any coding language, which is the point of quines. And it needs to have more than one byte of data, because, well, you'll see. Um, so first of all, what constitutes as Turing complete? OK. so. The problem of monkeys on typewriters, so every monkey has a, what? No, so every monkey has, obviously, it has fingers. And if it has a typewriter in an infinite amount of time, eventually, after smacking its head on the typewriter for thousands upon trillions of billions of years, it will recreate all of Shakespeare's works in order. It's just, it has the capabilities to, it has everything it needs to, it can do it. So what makes a language Turing complete is that if it has enough time and enough memory, if, if a system has enough time and enough memory, it can complete a problem. So HTML is not Turing complete. If I want to compute one plus one with HTML, no matter how much time or how many resources I give it, it can't do it. Now, Turing complete is also a little weird because it says can complete any problem. Well, eventually, with enough one plus ones, you will be able to make any math problem. It's an interesting concept, but there are just some things that are, and like you'll mostly see like joke SO lines won't be Turing complete because they'll have like some, they're made for a joke purpose and they can't actually run programs. On this is cheating quines. Um, I said in the beginning that there are some rules to being a true quine and what makes it cheating quine. So <laughs> there's this little language called HQ9+. HQ9+, is an SOLang, um, and it has four options. H, if you run H, it prints hello world. If you do Q, it prints its own source code, so it's a quine. If you run 9, it sings 99 bottles of beer on the wall. And if you run plus, it adds one to a counter that you can't physically see. So it's a joke language. Um, can it print its own source code? Yes, it can, because Q literally prints its own source code, which makes it a quine. However, if you ask it to do any problem that isn't singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall, making a quine or printing hello world, it can't do it. So it's not Turing complete. So that would be considered a cheating quine because technically it's a quine, but not really. Then in 1994, there's a competition where people come together and make funny code. That's it. There's a competition to make it the shortest possible. That was a winner. In 1994, somebody submits a blank code file, says if you run this code, it was a specific language, so it wouldn't give you an error. But if you run the code with nothing in it, you get nothing out. So it's a quine. Its own output is its input. 
after that, there was a rule that said it needs to be more than one byte of data. So that, that's the 1994 incident. Never happened again after that. Quines, all right, this is just a lot of like math stuff. Quines are technically possible within any programming language because no matter what, the programming language will have a break to it. So there's this thing called Clean's recursion theorem, which states that an infinite possibility of number systems, there's a time in where Q to the XY will equal X. What that means is that you take an index to any function, eventually at some point of time, through infinite trials, it will get its own index. This is Clean's recursion theorem. In math, programming is just made of a bunch of bits of math. This is also, if any of you guys know the SMN theorem, I don't, that's calc that I haven't gotten to yet, but it says the exact same thing, that if you have the integral in between S and M, eventually you will get N possible, which is the same like input of it. That's just the math and why it's always possible. Here's some basic ones just to see like what they're like. Here's some Python ones. Oh, this web page was great, like really, really good because it had just a list of tons of languages and their quines. So this is a Python quine. As you can see, if you run this, you will get everything inside of it again, which is the point of a quine. This is one, some work only in like command lines. <laughs> this is Java. <laughs> Java's range in all like how difficult it is to how long it is. So you have some really nice short ones in Python, and then you have Java. Um, this is because I know there's somebody here that really likes Golang. So this is Golang. It's the same thing. It takes its input, prints it out. This is my favorite. Coins work in SOLangs. So if you've ever heard of Brain Frick, um, it is an SOLang where every single operation is converted into pluses um, greater than, less than, and brackets. Oh, and minus signs. Can you read it? No. Can you run it? Yeah. The computer can read it. If it can read it, it can run it. It prints this out. You wouldn't really know, but it does. I ran most of these. Why did they exist? Funny. Um, also, you, the biggest thing about quines is obfuscating your own code, just making it so somebody else can't take it and read it. Because, as was once said, if you can't read your own code and nobody else can read it, then if your code gets taken, you can't, like, nobody can use it without your permission. Like, everybody here has done a CTF at some point of time. We're all cybersecurity students. Reversing is a really big part of CTFs. If the, if the code works perfectly, but you read it and it makes absolutely no sense, well, then you can't reverse it. I mean, that's just the most basic idea. So what you will have is a quine, which looks like a crazy advanced amount of code like this, doing nothing. It prints itself out. But if you read this, you don't know that. You just know that this is a lot of code and it probably does something. And now, but if you know, as a user yourself, you know that that's just junk thrown in. If you avoid that, well, then you can read your own code. A machine can read your code, but if Jack Smith steals your code, he doesn't have anything. There's some really cool obfusc obfuscation around there. This is donut.c. Um, this is all the code it takes. It's shaped in a donut, and it prints this. If, who here's an upperclassman? Like, do you guys read this? It's a donut. It's a donut. That, that's about it. But once again, <laughs> this is a donut of C code and a lot of math behind it and a lot of calculus. It's, it's a lot of math and how 3D rendering of images works and also just how um, pointers work in C. But it makes this, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, this is, once again, part of the, uh, the challenge, the obfuscating challenge. People will just make quines because it's funny and because it's cool. This right here, like, and they also make, all right, everybody knows we're all, we're all coders here. We're all part of cybersecurity. Everybody in like 
computer science and cybersecurity has that nerd. There's a lot of anime characters you will see in code, in ASCII art code. There's a lot. I sifted through a lot. There's a webpage specifically towards anime girls in Quines. I linked at the end, so if you guys really want it, go for it. This, oh, yeah. So this is the IOCCC, which is, this is the best competition ever. It's a competition of who can make the funniest code. And they meet every year since 1984. They started doing this. And they just write, write funny code. This was one of the winners. Uh, and they all get, like, their own reward if they make to the top. This is Don. Don Prince Don. It, continue print, it continues to print Don. It doesn't stop. This is Akira. Akira, once again, anime girls, you will find a lot of them in code. Akira, all this code, if you run it, it prints itself, but smaller. And it continues doing that until it disappears. So this code in this anime girl will print itself and compress itself and compress itself until it doesn't exist. Why? I don't know, but it's awesome. This is this is what really got me like into programming. Like, there's no reason for what purpose does this code have to exist? It's awesome. It's cool. That's what the IOCCC is all about. They just make cool code and then they make it smaller and smaller. This is what you call a radiation hardening find, which I didn't even know existed until I researched this. You could take any letter, any character out of this make it disappear, and it still runs perfectly. How? I don't know. Like, the amount of fallbacks you need to have, not only is it a quine, so it prints itself out, but if you delete any character in this, it still works. Any character. People have made this further and further. So far, the largest radiation quine is three. You can delete through any three characters, and it will still work. I don't know if you guys have ever, well, yeah, no, I do know. Everybody here is programmed. If you, miss a, if you mess up syntax, if you, I don't know, forget an I in print, it doesn't work. Here it does. There's so much behind these. And that's the point. It's just sick. Then you have quines that transform themselves into different languages. Once again, why? It's cool. That's it. This is what's called a self-transformative -transform quine or what's normally called a quine relay. Then, and also, yeah, these are really hard to do because if you want to make a quine that's in Ruby, that goes to Java, that goes to Python, that goes to Coffee Lang, you need to have, first of all, you need to have a lot of dockers. Um, second of all, you need to have code that works in every language or at least code that can read itself in every language and reproduce itself. Then there's this man. Yusuke Endo. He is the reason probably why I'm encoding. He made this quine. Um, oh. 10-ish years ago. He also wrote a book, which I really want to read, but I don't know Japanese. So if anyone is here willing to translate an entire book from Japanese to English, please tell me. He wrote a book on just quines, and it's really cool. So he made a program that goes to Ruby, to Rust, to Scala, to Scheme, to Scala, to Sed, to Shakespeare, to Eslang, and continues printing itself out in every single one, 128 different languages. He managed to make a program that prints itself in 128 different languages. Eslangs, it translates itself through BrainFrick. How do you get a program in BrainFrick to Python? They don't have remotely the same syntaxes. And he did this alphabetically from Ruby. And he made it look like this. All of this is code. I literally cannot make this any smaller. All of this is code. It's code in the Ouroboros, which I will talk a tiny bit about later. But this is pure code. This is art. Th this, is, this is code, but this is art. All of this makes this exact same image, translates all of its code through 128 different languages alphabetically. He did it with 50 first, and then he decided to one-up himself because he can. 128 languages this goes through, and it prints itself. 
once again, is there a point to this? No. Is it awesome? Yeah. And he drew it in an Ouroboros. What that is, just real quick, it's a dragon eating its tail. It's the endless cycle of life and life and death and of just recreating itself, which is the exact reason why he chose it. Because the dragon, as it consumes itself, will continue. The dragon will get longer and it will continue eating its tail. It never ends. It's infinity, which is also why you see the infinity sign in it and where the infinity sign comes from. Um, or where Ouroboros comes from. But this will never end. If you, if you run this on a computer, well, if you put this on a laptop or a computer and you give it unlimited power and unlimited resources, this will never end. It will continue translating itself and continue printing itself thousands upon thousands upon millions of times and never stop. This is the reason why I started cybersecurity and coding. Um, this, I, I watched a documentary and it had this, which is what got me into clients. This is, I, I can't say, I'm not an artist, but this is art. This is absolutely stunning. Something that not only looks like beautiful, but it's written out of code and it has symbolism behind it. I cannot ask for anything more. There's a lot more to Quines that I really wish I could talk about. However, it's all just pure math. Um, Klein was a mathematician and a philosopher. First of all, um, Klein was in Oppenheimer, fun fact, like in the movie. Um, he was talking to Albert Einstein right before um, Oppenheimer did. But everything that I want more to talk about is just different things about the math behind this. And it would take a really long time and a lot of math. There's also a lot more about turn completeness that I learned about during this, which is really, just really, really interesting. And obfuscation, where there are just certain examples. Um, I don't want to go through because I plan on making a different PowerPoint on obfuscation and SO langs. But like, there's a lot more to this. But I just wanted to show something that really interests me. Um, and yeah, and references wise, yeah, there's a few. This, where is, okay, wait. The Turing, okay, yeah, donut.c, this one, this explains all the math behind it. I would not really recommend looking at it unless you have, like, I'd say at least until after calc 2, maybe whatever the one after calc 2 is here. Um, this is the IOCCC, their Wikipedia. I also have the IOCCC linked here um, for all of their just normal competitions. If you want to check out some really cool code, like somebody made the entire first level of Mario in the shape of a Mario head, I would really recommend that. Um, there's also, this is the website for anime girls as code. Um, and they all do funny things. And yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Thank you guys for listening. If you have any questions, please ask. How, how easy is it to go from a idea of what you want this thing to look like to a completed form? Do you have to like keep trying it over and over until you get to it, or is there like a formula similar to the kind of shape? So unfortunately, because every language is different, and if you depending on the language, like if you want to do one well in Python, you can't really get any cool shapes for the reason that Python is completely, um, not syntax based, but yes, yeah, spacing, like indention. So you can't really make anything like that cool in Python. That's why the ones I showed you in Python are very straightforward um, for different languages. For once again, for C, the IOCCC, uh, International Competition of Obfuscated C Code. The reason why they're able to do that is because C is a language that you can mess around with as much as the formatting as you want. As long as you have the right pointers, you can make it. That's the reason why like donut.c exists and why um, Akira exists. They also, another language that uses a lot of these or that you can use a lot of these is Ruby. So that question depends entirely on like what language you're in that you want to make it in. Um, yeah. You. So
So if you, let's say you cat a Python file. Well, right now, if you're catting a Python file, if you want a quine of that, you need that quine to include cat because that is code that you're running to get the internal source of that Python file. So there's an entire list of command line, um, command line quines, and a lot of them will be like catting itself and just different things. But if you want it to be a quine, it needs to include, include every bit of code that is being used. So in that example, if you want to cat a file that had Python code in it, you need to somehow make it that it shows your, it shows the cat, like cat of that file. And then, yeah, the entire point of quines is that it's supposed to break something in coding. It's the only way to get it is by breaking something. It's something, it's, I don't know, I kind of view it as like the cybersecurity of coding because it's abusing some part of the system so you could learn from it and so you could just better do it. So the IOCCC, some of the best programmers, um, Yukuse, Yukuse, I can't pronounce his name. Um, he went to University of Tokyo for, for, um, for computing and he is now like a professional programmer. He does this on his free time because he can, but it's like, you do quines, you make quines to challenge yourself. And that's, that's the point of it. And it, you're learning while doing it. Huh? Uh, what I question see, I, I could Mr. Chase have? Do you know um, any, anything else that would go into a loop like an Ouroboros? <laughs> <laughs> would it possibly be a lanyard? It would. Oh my Clap God. Clap it up. Here you go. Thank you. This is Mark's first presentation.